what is up triple reptile family my name is Aaron today this is Gunther hot tomato frog let's do a setup yeah <laughs> do I need to go back to makeup no <laughs> no you're good okay cool all right what's going on guys today we're going to be doing a setup this is going to be for a tomato frog these guys are a cool little frog from Madagascar um, when they're full grown they're going to be about the size of a softball about you know four or five inches across um, really interesting they don't do too well with handling just like most of the other amphibians out there um, Cool little thing about these guys though, when you do you know, kind of aggravate them, scare them, sometimes they will secrete a milky substance out of their back. Um, and the purpose of that being if a predator does end up biting onto them, it'll glue their mouth shut. It's really, really sticky stuff, almost like super glue. It's pretty cool to see it happen. Um, but yeah, let's get started with their setup. One thing you want to do is put your bedding down, of course. Good bedding to use for these guys is you bet eco worth. Uh, holds a lot of moisture when they do poop in it. It's not going to make a funky smell. It stays pretty fresh for a long time. So, we'll put that down for our first layer here. All right, now that we got our bedding in here, we're just going to kind of spread it out. Um, the next thing we're going to be tossing down is going to be some zoo head frog moss. This is just a really good live moss. Kind of you know, spices up the look of your tank. Gives it that natural look. And also will help hold a little humidity in there too as it gets wet. Oh, and we forgot, most important thing, you guys may remember Steven, this little buddy, this is Gunther. <laughs> Gunther? He's a cool little frog. But, isn't he from Madagascar? He is, but he's got a German accent. Okay, as long as he's a foreign exchange student. Yeah, he he's a multicultural frog. So one thing we like doing before we put this moss into the cages is actually soaking it in some water. This just kind of brings the moss back to life. Um, you'll notice it'll, it'll actually hold a lot of the water that you put it into. Zombie moss. It is, it will come back. And after you've given it a nice soak, you can go ahead and toss it right on inside the cage. Just wherever you'd like. I usually like sticking it in the corners, just kind of fill up some of that empty space that's going to be in there. <laughs> And this moth doesn't necessarily spread out like some of the other types of moths out there. It will stay green though, as long as you keep it watered just right and not under too much intense light. All right, next we're gonna be putting in some of our plants. Some really good plants for the tomato frogs are actually gonna be like the pothos. Um, Really anything that's got some big broad leaves in it that, you know, it's going to give some cover for the guys. And with this coconut husk, you can actually leave the plants inside the, uh, the pot or even plant them in it. The plants will usually root in that stuff pretty well too. Uh, but just for this setup, we're going to leave the plants inside the pots that they came with. And for the sake of the plants, like I was mentioning, um, go ahead and leave the plants in the pot, especially for the tomato frogs. These guys will dig like crazy throughout your whole tank. So sometimes if you don't put them in a pot, they're going to destroy your plant's roots by rustling around. Guther here, he's a little plant destroyer too, so I wouldn't put it past him. And so you're piling up the coconut there to hide the Yeah, just basically. to cover up the base of the pot. Make it look faint. Too much plastic showing. Some good additions to put inside too are these little pieces of cord bark. You'll find that your frog's usually going to actually hide out underneath these. Um, they'll just kind of use them as a little shelter, and they look a little more natural than some of the other hides out there. And this is just the Zoom Med cord flask that we sell on our website. <laughs> and you'll find all of these guys along with the other supplies I've gotten here and more at llllreptile.com. And next. We're actually going to put some more moss in here because that's not quite enough. So you see when we're planting this moss kind of all around, um, if Guther is anything like me and things like I do, the more bush the better. So you know, you want to have a lot of different plants inside that cage. So right now we've actually got these little half log hides kind of looking like a shire, so Guther's going to be a little hobbit tomato frog. It's going to be a pretty rad setup. And if you look at him, that's probably the most excited. Oh, he's giving me the cold shoulder. That's probably the most excited tomato frog I've ever seen. <laughs> he's just a little camera shy, though. <laughs> now, 
now that we've got our water bowl in here too, um, we're actually just going to stick with a small corner bowl so it doesn't take up too much space. And uh, we've got this moss down here in the front of our water bowl just to kind of give it a uh, cool little feel while we're trying to get into it. Um, we're going to leave the rest of the tank to just have bare eco worms because sometimes these guys will, you know, like I said, they'll dig and you might tear up that moss if we put it all throughout the tank. This way you'll still have a way to get away from that side and, you know, hunker down over here if, uh, if he wants to. If, uh, Gunther does want to dig in a peel box or something, you know. And so let's say Gunther's going to be, you know, reenacting a little bit of Normandy here. He can dig into his little pill box down on this side and, you know, wait for any of the invading allies. <laughs> so next we're going to throw in our thermometer. Um, for this one we're actually going to use a Fluker's thermometer hygrometer. It's actually a combo, so it'll tell you both temperature and humidity. This is actually a really cool unit too. It'll tell you the um, minimums and maximums of what the temperatures and humidity levels are getting inside your cave while you're gone. All you have to do is just press a button here on the top of the minimum and maximum, and it'll actually show you what it's recorded for, you know, how long it's been since you've ever reset it. All you gotta do is pull the plastic tag out the back, turn it on, peel off your adhesive backing to these Velcro strips, which you're gonna attach on the inside of your glass tank. And with my super girly nails here, I'm gonna get them off. So we'll slap that on the back there. And just like that, you've got your Velcro attached. You'll, that'll break it, it'll peel off. Stick it right back on, you can move it around the cage if you want to. And cool thing about these two, you've got no probes, no ugly wires getting inside of your tank. Kind of gives you a little more of a cleaner, streamlined look. Because uh, Gunther here, he, he definitely dives the, uh, these sexy pads, yeah. Okay, so now we are going to attach the heat pad on the bottom of the tank for Gunther's cool house here. Um, we are going to stick it over here on the opposite side from the water bowl. Uh, all you have to do is open this bad boy up. For this we are using a Zoomed 10 to 20 gallon repi thug. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I doing? We're going to get our heat pad situated on here. Um, just like with that thermometer, you just got to peel off the piece of backing. Stick it onto the underside of your tank, preferably on the side away from the water bowl. That way you're not going to have your water constantly evaporating out of it. So we've got your cord hanging up back here, ready to plug in. And you're just going to find the nearest hole and just stick that bad boy inside there. And some people like using these uh, Zilla thermostats too. These work really well so you don't have to constantly monitor the inside of your cage's temperatures. Um, you're going to run the probe just inside the tank here. I'll open it up here and show you. Real simple unit to use. You're going to stick one end to the wall. Then you've got your, uh, your temperature dial here. You're going to set it to whatever temperature you want the tank to kind of consistently sit at. So let's say you want it set at 90 degrees, which is definitely going to be a little too hot for these guys, but for example, set it to that 90 area. Plug in your heat pad down to the other side here and run this probe inside the tank where you want it to take the temperature readout from. And you can actually just have just the probe going inside the tank and the rest of the unit sitting on the outside. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, we are going to introduce Gunther to his new house, yeah? <laughs> oh, run free little Fraulein. <laughs> oh, look at that. That was some air. I know, I got some air time. Just like an old German Mesha Smith, yeah? <laughs> okay, and with this thermometer too, um, nice thing about it, you can actually detach it like we did before. And let's say you want to take your temperature readout from the other side over here where you've got your heat pad. You can go ahead and stick it right down there just to make sure it's consistent with your thermostat. With these guys, you want to keep the warm side of their tank about 83, 84 degrees. Cool side can drop down to high 70s would be ideal. Um, since they do come from Madagascar too, it's not too bad to have a little bit of air ventilation going through the cage too. They don't like it super hot and muggy all the time. So you can just stick your thermometer down there. Let it sit for 5-10 minutes so it gets an accurate readout. Just make sure it is, you know, lining up with what is going on that thermostat that we have the heat pack hooked up to as well. And when it does come time to feed these guys, uh, what works best usually is just like small things like new worms and small crickets. Um, right now we're feeding them actually just a cricket dusted with a calcium supplement with vitamin D3 on it. And you probably won't eat in front of us here. Um, once nighttime rolls around though, these guys are not turtles, so we should start chowing down then. Uh, Gunther loves the nightlife, yeah. So, uh, 
There he is, settled in. He's, you can see already he's dug down a little bit. And uh, shouldn't be too much longer till nightfall here, and he should start eating some of those crickets that we just tossed in there. And if you guys have any questions about any of these things, um, or you're looking for any of the supplies, head on over to our website at llreptile.com.